children now we will move to another type of diagrams that is frequency diagrams now frequency diagrams are more suitable where the group data is given in the case of ungrouped data bar diagrams are more suitable because there is no frequency given along with it but in the case of group data when the frequency is given then frequency diagrams are more suitable so these are more suitable for group data now what are group data these type of diagrams with group data includes histograms frequency polygons and ogives these are three types first we'll take the histograms these are two dimensional diagrams where the frequency is given along with the class interval and length and width both matters in the case of bar diagrams you have studied earlier that only length matters length is on the basis of the value given except in the case of percentage bar diagram where the width is also taken into consideration but normally with bar diagrams only length is considered width is not considered and according to the value given we draw the length of the bars but in the histograms length and width both matters because these are the area diagrams in which length and width both matters second is frequency polygons these are line graph these represents individual classes along with their frequencies this will be taking later after histograms then next is ogives these are also line graph these represents cumulative frequencies what are cumulative frequencies you have done it earlier less than method and more than method so in this we'll be taking cumulative frequencies with the help of ogives or line graph so these are three types histograms frequency polygon and ogives first we'll be taking histograms then after completing this we'll be moving to these two clear so histograms this is sample of histogram this will be taking later along with the example but this is a sample of histogram you can understand that these are the joined rectangles in the case of bar diagrams each bar was separate and there was equal space between the bars but in the case of histograms the rectangles are joined together this will be taking with the example now out of this three first histogram we are taking now what are the features of histogram this is an area diagram why it is called an area diagram because length and breadth or length and width both are taken into consideration so the whole area is taken into consideration so these are known as area diagrams second these represent class frequencies by vertical rectangles now here in the diagram the frequencies are given and each frequency is shown with the help of vertical diagrams vertical graph you can say so in this way these histograms they represent class frequencies by vertical rectangles clear third is histograms are also called frequency histogram why they are called frequency histogram because histograms are drawn with the help of group data or in case of group data we are drawing the histogram so in the group data you know that class interval is given along with their frequencies so histograms these are also called frequency histograms now another feature is that these are two dimensional having joined rectangles two dimensional because area and it considers the area that is length and breadth both and these are drawn with the help of joined rectangles having no space in between all the rectangles are joined and they are showing the frequencies now histograms are of two types histograms of equal class interval and histogram of unequal class interval two types of histogram are there sometime the equal class interval is given that means the gap between 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 that is equal class interval is given 
and sometimes unequal class interval is given that means there may be a lowest class interval 0 to 5 and the highest may be 20 to 40 or 40 to 80 and so on. So this way there is unequal class interval. So two type of histograms are drawn histogram with equal class interval and histogram of unequal class interval. Now these two will be taking with the help of examples. I will give you the imaginary example and tell you how to draw the histogram with the equal class interval and unequal class interval. Now let us move to this first one histogram of equal class interval. Now here we have taken the marks and frequency. Suppose in a class 4 children are getting marks between 0 to 10, 10 children are getting marks between 10 to 20, 16 are getting between 20 to 30, 22 are getting between 30 to 40 and so on. So this way the frequency and the marks are given. right? Now here you see the class interval, this is called class interval and this is frequency. The class interval what is shown over here, do you notice one thing? Here the class interval is the same, right? This is 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. What is the class interval? That is 10. In each case, class interval is 10 and frequency is different. So this is the case of equal class interval. Now how to draw the histogram in this case? We will draw the axis O, X and O, Y and remember that always frequency is taken on O, Y axis and marks are taken on O, X axis or class interval is taken on O, X axis and frequency is taken on O, Y axis. Now here first we will draw two axes O, X and O, Y as usual. Now divide the axis according to the magnitude of frequency. Here you have to see that what is the lowest frequency and what is the highest frequency. Here highest is 22. So the distribution here should be such that it is covering 22. So for the convenience sake I have taken till 25 and there should be equal distance between the two, between all these frequencies. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 25 will cover the highest fre frequency of 22. Now here the class interval, the lowest is 0, highest is 80. So here again we have to divide the axis equally according to the magnitude of class interval. Here the lowest is 0, then 10, 20, 30, 40, so on till 80. You need not extend it to 100 or 200 because this is of no use. Similarly, you need not extend it till uh, beyond 25 because it is of no use. The data is confined to these limits only. Now what next step is that you see the data given here and accordingly draw the rectangles. First is 0 to 10. Now this is 0, this is 10. The frequency is 4. So draw till 4, you get a rectangle over here. Next is 10 to 20, so extend it till 10 and get a rectangle like this. Next 20 to 30, this is 16, so extend it till 16 and join it here. Then next is 30 to 40, extend it till 22, this is 30 to 40 is 22, extend it till 22 and make a rectangle. Then 40 to 50 is 20, again till 20, then 50 to 60 is 18, 60 to 70 is 8, 70 to 80 is 2 and join the top of the rectangles after extending to a required limit. So this way you will get different rectangles over here. The figure what I have written over here this indicates the frequency of each class interval. Class interval is given here and each class interval is having different rectangles and you know as the 
class interval is equal, so there is no uh, you can say broader rectangle, it is of equal width because class interval is the same and length only is varying because of difference in frequency. Is that clear to you? Okay. Now, this is an example of equal class interval. This is the data given accordingly any data whatsoever is given to you. You can draw the histogram on the basis of the pattern what I have shown here. Now, this whole is known as histogram. Remember that all the rectangles have to be joined together. Now, another I told you this is histogram with unequal class interval. Let us take an example of unequal class interval and see how it is drawn. Now, histogram with unequal class interval. Now, in case of unequal class interval, you have to adjust the frequencies. You know that frequencies in the unequal class interval that whatever is given that is you have to convert it into frequencies of equal class interval. There is an, an adjustment factor and then on the basis of that you have to draw. So, in the case of unequal class interval you have to first adjust the frequencies then only you can have the accurate diagram. Now, adjustment of frequency is done on the basis of this formula. This is adjustment factor for any class is equal to class interval of the concerned class and the lowest class interval. Now, what does that mean? Now, here the example I have given weekly wages in rupees and number of workers. Now, these are the weekly wages given over here. If you see it carefully, you will find that here the class interval is 5, again 5, 5, 5, here it is 10, here it is 20 and here it is again 20, right? And frequency is given here. Now, the lowest class interval is 5 and the highest class interval is 20. So, this formula says class interval of the concerned class divided by lowest class interval. What is lowest class interval? That is 5. Now, if you are adjusting the frequency of 30 to 40, the class interval here is 10 and the lowest is 5. That means, you will divide the class interval of concerned class by the lowest class interval and whatever you will get that you will divide frequency by that factor. Now, let us take it clearly over here. This data is given, wages are given here as given the question, the workers, number of workers are here. Now, adjustment factor this is on the basis of this formula. What is adjustment factor over here? Class interval of the concerned class upon the lowest class interval. Now, here the class interval of this class is 5 and the lowest class interval in the whole this thing is also 5. So, 5 upon 5 is equal to 1. Same way 15 to 20 concerned class interval is 5, lowest class interval is 5 again we are getting 1. Next one, concerned class interval is again 5 upon 5 is equal to 1. Again, concerned class interval is 5, lowest is 5, again 1. Now, we come to 30 to 40, concerned class interval is 10, lowest class interval is 5, so adjustment factor is 2. This is called adjustment factor or divider because frequencies are going to be divided by these figures. 40 to 60 class interval is 20, concerned class interval is 20, lowest class interval is what? Again it is 5 and divided we get 4. Same way 60 to 80, concerned class interval is 20, lowest class interval is 5, again we are getting the divider or adjustment factor equal to 4. Now, what is the next step? We have to find out the frequency density. We have to adjust the frequencies after dividing the frequencies by these adjustment factors. Now, frequencies are 7, 10, this one is given over here. 
first one 7 will divide by 1 we will get 7 again this one is divided by 1 10 this is 1 again 1 now this frequency is 12 it should be divided by 2 and we get the frequency this is adjusted frequency that is 6 again 12 is divided by 4 and adjusted frequency will be 3 here again 8 will be divided by 4 adjusted frequency will be 2 right so this way the frequencies have been adjusted we cannot adjust the class interval but the frequencies will be adjusted to make it more accurate now on the basis of these adjusted frequencies now we'll draw the histogram which i have shown here again o y axis will have frequency that is number of workers o x axis will have class interval here it is in the form of weekly wages now here first class interval is 10 to 15 and between 10 to 15 what is the frequency that is 7 so we'll make a rectangle till the height of 7 this means this is clear that between 10 to 15 weekly wages there are 7 number of workers again 15 to 20 the frequency is 10 so we will extend the rectangle till 10 and join it with the previous one next is 20 to 25 this is 27 over here so here it is 27 again it is extended till 27 over here and joined with the previous one next one 25 to 30 is 15 there was no adjustment between these frequencies 25 to 30 extend it till 15 and join it with the previous rectangle now next one is 30 to 40 here you have made the adjustment the original frequency 30 to 40 was 12 but after making adjustment it has been converted 30 to 40 into 6 so you will make a rectangle till the height of 6 and join it with the previous one you will not make the rectangle up till the height of 12 you will make the rectangle till the height of adjusted frequency same way next one is 40 to 60 40 to 60 now here the original frequency was 12 but the adjusted frequency is 3 so you will make the rectangle till the height of 3 only right same way the last frequency here it is 2 after the adjustment so make the rectangle equal to 2 and the class interval you will show in the same way that was 30 to 40 40 to 60 60 to 80 you will not make any adjustment in the class interval but you will make the adjustment in the frequency only so if you compare the previous diagram where there was equal class interval all the rectangles there also they were joined together but they were of same width and different length here again the length is different but side by side the width is also different because of unequal class interval so this way histogram is drawn with the equal class interval and unequal class interval now certain things you have to keep in mind just notice this i have written three important points what you should keep in mind when you are drawing the histogram first is always represent classes on the x axis and frequencies on the y axis right always x axis shows class interval and frequencies are shown on the y axis whereas in the case of bar diagrams you have learnt earlier that the diagram can be drawn either vertically or horizontally but histogram is always drawn in this manner and so class interval is always given on the x axis and frequencies on the y axis second is in case of discontinuous data that is if the class interval is in the form of 0 to 19 and 20 to 29 now there is a gap discontinuous class interval 0 to 19 and 20 to 29 
in this case always mark the lower limit in the class interval right that will cover the gap in case of 0 to 10 10 to 20 you will mark 0 10 20 30 and so on right so remember this thing in this continuous data that is 0 to 19 20 29 always mark the lower limits third is width of the rectangle should be in proportion to the size of class interval what does this mean you cannot change the class interval or you should not change the class interval because class interval has to be given the same manner but you have to make the width of the rectangle on the basis of adjusted frequencies so these are important things to keep in mind and this tells you how to draw the accurate histograms thank you very much